Why does the internet not have its own philosophy? Think about that. There's no philosophy that allows us to describe the internet all the way through. There are theories of arborescence and rhizome. He's come from Deleuze. These allow us to describe the internet as interconnected, having many different tubes. This is what a rhizome is, a tour. There are also theories of dialectics, of a back and forth. This comes from Hegel and Marx. Many people go back and forth online all the time. There are novel concretions and concepts that emerge out of negations. That's all Hegel and Marx. But there's also theories of technology. You can think of Gilbert Simondon and his theory of technological milieus and individuation. There are spaces in which every technical object we have fit into human society. And the internet is one such technical object. So we could think of it as simple technology. I think all of these are incomplete. I don't think they do enough. I think a philosophy of the internet needs to be a digital dialectic. I don't think it can be a psychoanalysis. People have done this, and I think it works. The internet is certainly suffused with projections of desire, archetypal formations, and so forth. In the same way all mass media and all great human literature are. But I don't think that sufficiently specifies what's going on on the internet. Describing the internet in terms of a literary theory or a psychological theory applied to literature doesn't quite do justice to the whole of it, since it is a technical object. To describe the mind only in the internet isn't enough. But also to describe it as something simply dialectical isn't enough. The rest of the world is dialectical. So we can't really stop there. But again, as I've said, we also can't just stop at Deleuze, who says it's tubes. We need, I think, to put together Simondon, Deleuze, and Hegel. And I'd like to try to do so right now. Deleuze gives us the digital in digital dialectics. He's trying to describe human phenomena in terms of the post-cybernetic revolution of the 50s and 60s. Meaning, he wants to describe phenomena in terms of governance mechanisms, in terms of feedback loops, in terms of feed-forward loops. All of this is accounted for in his count of nomadology, also in his account of rhizome. Many interfolding, interconnecting interstices exist in the rhizomatic world. Lines of flight exist between these connections so that in an instant, fusions can happen and unhappen. That's not Hegel, that's not Marx. But what is Hegel and Marx is something Deleuze doesn't account for, which is that the dialectic seems to persist in these lines of flight. Of course, Deleuze doesn't really deny this overtly. But he does deny it's the only way to think about the internet or to think about the world as such. And I don't think that's right either. There's something about the simplicity of the dialectic that helps us at least as a heuristic understand what's happening when we put things online. Hegel's dialectic is famously convoluted and misunderstood, but I think we could simplify it in three terms that he uses in the outline of the science of logic. These are being, essence, and concept. Being is some generality. Essence is being outside of itself, or negated. And concept is being actually, concretely, and specifically. You'll notice that there are oppositions contained in here, the general and the particular, the potential and the actual, the many and the one. These taken together are hard to understand, but at least when it comes to human communication, it's pretty obvious. The master-slave dialectic is the most famous instance, and I'll recount it for you quickly now. If in the world there is a master and he is overseeing someone, he, while looking at that someone, cannot actually see himself because this someone is inferior to him. And this someone being in the inferior position, this person does all that is needed of the master. This person does so much for the master that he ends up learning all the skills that were needed to do what the master needed of him. He knows how to chop wood. He knows how to cook. He knows how to clean. The master knows nothing. He's an ignorant twat who just has money. So in the end, the master is negated by the slave so that the slave himself may become free. The generality of the master is hollowed out and stays hollow because the master, in doing what is required of him, negates this hollowness. He gains knowledge, and in gaining knowledge, he realizes how to overthrow the empty master. We can think of almost all human social relations on these terms, though we probably shouldn't. When all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So we need other things to think through. And I think 
The idea of the rhizome gives us a way into those other things. So once we've put the dialectic and the rhizome together, I think we have, to use a hokey metaphor, lenses fit quite well to some metal. We have a pair of glasses through which we can see no longer so darkly. We can see internet phenomena, and we can read into them some novel lines of flight through the dialectic. That's to say, we can see social relations changing. Nothing man has ever made has left him unchanged. As soon as man was able to figure out how to build an aqueduct, he then built statues that flowed with water, and he admired them as such. As soon as he built the phone, he also monopolized it and generated billions of dollars with it. Nothing we've made has left us unchanged, and the internet is the same. What I would like to say about the internet specifically, though, is that the way it's changed us is almost unlike anything we've seen before. The ability to put yourself out there, the ability to connect on a many-to-many basis, not just a one-to-many basis, is utterly unprecedented, communicatively speaking. And I think, through a kind of imminent anthropology, or a sociology of the associations that form online, we have in our hands, with Hegel and Deleuze, a way to look into these associations and analytically interrogate how we're changing. This isn't how our minds are changing. This isn't how human society is changing. This is how the human being as such is changing. Can a philosophy get to that? I think it can. And I think that Every major philosophy that has had an impact on world history has in fact done just this. Hegel attempted to make this explicit in his notion of the encyclopedia, the cycle, or the going around. Thus he calls his philosophy a circle of circles because it encapsulates everything. Of course, it doesn't, and Hegel is turned on his feet by Marx, since Marx thinks he's on his head. But then Marx is himself negated through a series of historical changes. Hegel didn't finish everything, but the point is this. Every philosophy, not just Hegel's, means something for history. And I think the internet also means something for history. So, the internet must have its own philosophy. That's all, and I hope it made sense. I hope you (laughs) take something from this, and I hope that you stick around to see what else I may have in store as this project unfolds. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you in the comments of the next one. Thanks so much.